I'm going to show you how I restart a shrimp tank with one of these little breeder boxes. This is the tank I want to restart. There's only about three shrimp in here and this is my boa slash fishbone tank right next to it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my little breeder box onto here. We're going to catch all the shrimp out of here, put them into the breeder box, redo this tank and then we're going to wait roughly about a week before we introduce the shrimp back from the breeder box into the tank. This is how you do it if you don't want to put them in buckets. Here we have our little breeder box. Now what this basically does guys is it takes water out of the main tank and it puts it into this little encatchment area here where our temporary shrimp will be living until this tank is ready. Right? So you can see how it works. It works via air. It's very very cool. I've actually put on a micro mesh bag on here so no baby shrimp from this tank can get in to this water supply. And yeah I have this up a little bit too high but you can see how the water fills up here and then it goes out over this little part in the corner. What we need to do next guys is we need to catch the shrimp in this tank and then add them to this container. We're probably going to add a little bit of wood or, or plant material or something like that right? because these guys are going to be in here for roughly about a week. Make sure guys as well that you have the right attachment on here because you, the, the other one has a smaller a diameter of slat which lets less water through so yeah keep that in mind because we're going to put a lid on here as well. Let's actually just grab something in the tank here that we're actually going to add into this little containment area. I'm not going to be really feeding these shrimp at all while they're in here but yeah let's give them something to cling on to. Let's grab this, give it a little shake. Now as I said the reason I'm changing this tank over today is because yeah there's been unsuccessful batch after unsuccessful batch of shrimp in this tank so yeah it is time that we actually did something about it instead of just hoping that the next batch lives because I think there's still three shrimp in this tank but yeah how long do you give them until they you know they eventually die right so let's uh, catch the shrimp they should be fairly easy to catch the big uh, brick and stuff will be going into this top tank this tank is getting actually getting done next because all the shrimp in that tank are coming down to here so yes I'm going to be a busy boy So we have caught all our lovely shrimp. There's three of them, like I thought there was. One of them's a girl and two of them are boys. And uh, guys, you need to make sure that when you do it this way, you need to make sure that you put your lids on because uh, yeah, these shrimp will climb. Get your lids on, make sure that they are secure. Right, and then you need to empty this tank. Now I'm just being a little bit diligent here because I haven't given up hope that no baby shrimp have survived, but I'm not holding my breath, right? So yeah, we're, when I'm doing this guys, I'm just gonna be careful that I'm not uh, killing stuff if that, if that makes sense. I'm going to take this opportunity just to have a little last ditch look at all the soil and whatever else and just to see what I can see. One of the things that is very noticeable is the lack of snails. I think this tank was needing done for a little while but what I'm doing here guys is I'm actually saving as many as the trumpet snails as I can and there's really not that many at all. I think I've seen like three or four and that is it. You see them? You can just go into the tank next door. So we have removed the tank right and I've actually given this little area here a little wipe right because uh, what can happen guys is snails from other tanks can fall between the gaps and what you don't want to do right is to put your new tank or your freshly washed tank or whatever back onto a snail because it can crack the glass. In case I didn't mention this already right I'm going to go back to using Akadama as my shrimp soil just because it's the, the soil that I've had the absolute most luck with with shrimp breeding right I've, you, guys you can go back to it and look at my previous videos like from years ago you'll see like I had literally thousands and thousands of shrimp on on this soil right so we're going to go back to it I have four bags here let me show you the bags Ibaraki, Akadama, two red stripe this is stuff I've used before it's very very good right so we're going to put in this soil so we have approximately five centimeters at the back sloping down to about three centimeters at the front right and this is all I need to last me for a good year of shrimp keeping and then after that year we just repeat the process, we take all the soil out and replace it again. Next going in guys is the water, right, and I have uh, approximately 40 litres of reverse osmosis water up there that I have remineralized with salt and mineral GH+. Plus. Let me just show you here, this is the stuff I use, I use 5 grams in 40 litres of water to give me a conductivity of 200. It's important guys that when we do this that you realise that when you restart a tank and you put water in, the water doesn't stay at that conductivity because the soil is basically like a giant, how would you call it, like an ionizer, deionizer, right? So 
Over the course of a few days, this soil will literally suck the calcium and magnesium out of the water and it will make the water more acidic and more acidic and more acidic. Okay, so it is important that in the least, in the first couple of days at least anyway, that you don't add things to the tank like plants and whatever else because you'll, you'll just simply kill them. I'm not actually going to add my filter back into this tank here um, until this tank is filled up as well. I'm then going to dose some cecum stability. We're going to add about 5, 10 mil, something like this in this tank. And I'm going to do that, guys, for seven days in a row before I even think about adding these shrimp back into the tank. Right? Because one of the most important things that you must do uh, when you do a, water, uh, a tank change like this is... Uh, you must monitor the pH, right? If you don't monitor the pH, if you put the shrimp simply straight back in after you've done this and then you have a giant pH drop, guess what happens? Your shrimp will be dead the next day. This is quite often what literally happens. People will come into their rooms or look at the shrimp tanks the next day and they'll be like, oh, my shrimp has molted, but why is it dead? That is the reason, right? So you need the tank to stabilize itself over the course of three, four, five days. And it also helps if you're adding stuff like stability. I think you could also use stuff like Dr. Tim's uh, bacterial su supplements, I think Aqua Safe Start, no, is it Tetra Safe? I can't remember which one. Let's get our water in. As soon as this water level is up high enough, maybe another centimetre, I'm actually going to start to add the bacteria. I have just double checked the dose on this, guys, and it is actually 5 mil on the first day, and then it's 2.5 mil on, on the days after, up to 7 days, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, this pipette holds about 3 mil, so we're going to put in two of these into the tank right now. There's only roughly about a couple of centimetres of water in there. And we're going to let that fill up. And that will be it done for today. But then tomorrow, guys, we'll add two and a half mil. And then the next day we'll add two and a half mil. And then the next day we'll add two and a half mil. So just remember and remember what day you start your tank. So what is it for us today? Is I think it's a Friday, right? So next Friday, this tank will be ready for this shrimp in this breeder box here to go back into the tank. Right, let's get the filtration in over here. Right, we must give it a little shake because you can see all my lovely Galaxy Pintos and stuff are on it. Let's give us a little shake as we take it out because, uh, yeah, if we put the shrimp in there right now, as this water is, it will probably kill them. A little look underneath, make sure there's no clingers. Let's put it over. And, uh, yeah, we're going to stick this right on at the back. Right, and I want, I want it to go, like, clockwise around. Like this, all the way around. We've put our stuff in already. Let's have a little look at the conductivity because uh, we'll look at this tomorrow as well. So what's that, 190? 192. Right, and I want to show you this, guys, because I want to show you the drop that you get, and this is why you can't add shrimp straight away. Okay, guys, we are on day two. Let's add our 2.5 to 3 mil into our tank of cecum stability. Like this. Right, and let's also check the conductivity, because remember I did say that it will change. Let's have a little look and see if it has changed. This is why you don't put shrimp in straight away, because there is a drawdown. A drawdown. Right, so right now it's dropped to 185. There's something else as well. This little breeder box that we set up here, this morning when I came in, there was no shrimp in, the, in this little container at all, right? And what it is, guys, is this little part here, there's a little uh, grate that stops the shrimp and fish leaving. Well, the bottom of the grate is about, I don't know, it must be a good... Let me see, you my guys may be able to see this. It's at least a good 8 mil. You see it? If you can see the sponge on the inside over here, yeah, so that's definitely big enough for shrimp to crawl through, right? So I've just used a really coarse piece of sponge and blocked it, blocked the grate so the water flow can flow through really easily. And yeah, that's how we do it. Right? So I've caught two of them <laughs> because I can't see the other one yet, so I'll have to stay here and have a look for them. But yeah, but guys, so we have two days done. We need another five days of two and a half mil. And probably the last day we'll start to put the plants back in all everything else that we need to put back in here and then we'll see what it's like for pH and whatever else you guys get an idea of when to put the shrimp back in. It should be fine by seven days. And our tank below has been set up for six days and now we're going to add some plants and some hardscape to it just to give it a little bit more structure and I explain that here that we're going to be adding things more to the center of the tank 
uh, to make sure that we have better flow in our tanks overall because I'd have noticed, especially in the one that you're looking at here, that the flow is pretty poor around some parts of it which is not good. You want good clean flow all the way around everything because uh, then you'll have a healthier shrimp tank. You can see what I mean here when I'm saying that we are putting it more in the centre. I'm going for a simpler look. This tank is really, really clean looking already, which is good. Because, um, yeah, as I said, we want to make sure that we have fantastic circulation, guys. Let's add in our Seacom stability. As I said, this was day six, so we're adding in two and a half mil. Yeah, let's add our feeding dish. This is really important because you don't want stuff to go into the substrate because it will make your tank toxic. And then we're going to add our little thing that we built, a little shrimp sex hotel. This is just for baby shrimp to go in because um, yeah, the adults can't get into the tiny little crevices so it's it makes it a nice place for our shrimp to go in, especially the babies. I'm going to add a soaking oxidator here. These are not 100% necessary but do they help? Yes. They hyper oxygenate the water which is always good for baby shrimp and animals in an aquatic environment. We're also going to add some leaves guys and I've got some leaves from the tank above it that are in different stages of decomposition which is quite important again and these will all have little goodies on them like little snails little animals different types of bacteria whatever else so we're seeding the tank with them as well and I try and space these out a little bit so that the flow is good we're making little islands we're setting up a great environment for our shrimp it is the eighth day. We are going to move the shrimp to the new home and we're going to do it like this. Normally, you would drip acclimate shrimp to a new tank, wouldn't you? Well, this also just happens to be a drip acclimator, right? So all we have to do to adjust these shrimp to their new environment is move this little box from here to here. Right? So let's see if I can do this with one hand or if this is going to be a mistake, right? Because if I could do this with one hand, it'd be super easy. Shouldn't be that hard because it's not that heavy. And then you put it into the new tank. So once the conductivity is the same as the, the tank in this little container, what I think I'll do guys is I'll just manually catch them out. I'll probably also put this piece of wood here at the back because there is a little bit of a gap there which uh, would be nicely filled with this java mustering. Right? So I'll let these, acc these acclimate in this little box and I'll come back when the water is ready and we'll put the shrimp in the tank. Okay guys, it has been quite a few hours, we're almost there. Let's uh, check something else I'm going to put into this aquarium because I have also been using something guys that I have used before in tanks and I had great success with and over time I forgot to keep on using it and yeah, I've seen a little bit of a decline in my aquarium. So over the last few weeks I've actually started to put it back in my tanks and that thing is zeolite. Right here is a big 10 kilogram bag of this stuff right guys and, and it is basically a catalytic converter or uh, deionizer if you want to put it that way and it absorbs impurities in the water this is what it looks like let me grab a cup right because this is the amount that we're going to put in I'm going to add a big cup like this into every tank that we have so this is how much we're going to add to each tank this size I'm actually doing it in quite a lot of my tanks you probably can see it over here and over here and guys this helps just to keep the tank extra 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 clean and I think that's what you need with the uh, bee shrimp it might be a little bit dusty in the water so it might go a little bit cloudy but I'm going to put it near the filter once this stuff has uh, used all its ability to uh, absorb stuff it will actually become part of the filtration in the system as well right so this is good for at least a year in our tanks right so let's get it in I wonder if we can see from under here maybe a little bit better you probably can I'm going to put it in slowly guys just so that it doesn't cloud up too bad because yeah we're going to put the shrimp in here real soon and we're actually just going to pour it onto the soil you can probably just see that you know another thing I promised was um, that we would do a pH test so you guys could see what these readings were right so I've just done one I've used a Sarah test kit this is five ml of water and it's four drips of the little solution that we have in that container there so that is the reading I wonder how I could show you this. Hi guys, looking at it, I think it is slap bang in the middle there. It's very hard to show you on this, but yeah, if we can, let, let me see. I'll hold this up there because you can see these colors here. Maybe you can kind of tell a little bit of a hold it there. 
It's between 5.5 and 6, which is absolutely bang on perfect. Let's start by removing this lid. And we'll take out this piece of wood here. And what I'm also going to do here, guys, I just want to check the female and see if she has buried up in here. Because she wasn't buried, and then I thought I saw mating, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't 100% sure, so... Uh, somewhere in there is the third male, unless he's already climbed out the trunk. Yeah, she, I think she is buried actually, which is awesome. I don't see that third male. Where is he? He must be on that piece of wood. Let's get it in. We're going to put it away at the bark. Like so. And then, we are going to add these shrimp to the trunk. It's odd where that male has went because it could have only went in the tank. It must be on the bit of wood that I put in. We will see. We will see. <laughs> Let's get a net and uh, we'll put the shrimp in as well. No, she's not buried actually. She's not buried. Let me just get the bubbles off. Chill, chill, chill. Chill. She's freaking out. But this just shows you guys how good it is for us to keep our shrimp and these little containers like this how easy it is to see them and stuff god this this is a feisty little bugger let me see will you come off little shrimplet i mean i can only assume that the male that is missing is in the tank somewhere there's a female there i'll have to check around here because that is odd it is odd yeah, they are really, really feisty coming out of that little container. And there you have it, guys. That is how you set up a completely new tank using one of these lovely little breeder boxes. I think they're awesome. I'm actually going to go to the store and I'm going to buy a few more of them. I'm probably going to buy all of them that they have. I think they were like $20, something like that. But yeah, they're well worth it because they save you a lot of hassle in that you do not need another... An empty tank to put shrimp into, blah, 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 to set up your new tank while you wait kind of thing. Yeah, so these are, these things are well worth the money. The other thing as well, guys, is that um, I like to take pictures and whatnot. So these will be good for taking the shrimp out of the tank, putting in, taking pictures. If you enjoyed today's show, guys, please leave a big like and thumbs up, and I'll see you all in the next one.